Welcome, and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you. Because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on neural strength. And questions I will be asking are, what is brainwave optimization? And what does a client do when they have brainwave optimization sessions? And why do people come to neural strength? And I am delighted to present Paulette Hastings from Bloomington, Minnesota. Welcome, Paulette. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here, Tina. I'm so delighted that you're a knowledge for wellness, but it is your first time with us. Mm -hmm. So I'd really like for you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, your love, your passion, mm -hmm. and why you chose to go into this profession. Okay, great. I was really excited actually when this opportunity came to start a brainwave optimization affiliate office here in Minneapolis. Okay. We are uh, one of about 150 offices worldwide that do this. But for me, this was an important thing because I have a real passion to help people. Okay. When I first learned about this, I was hearing stories about clients who were um, finding uh, improved quality of life because of sleeplessness or depression or what other issues. Mm -hmm. I happened to not have significant issues like that. Okay. But I did want to experience brainwave optimization myself. I was and am a mother of three children. Uh -huh. And I found that I really did not have enough energy to get myself through the day. Oh. I had some impact with my sleep, but um, it was especially energy that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I was also trying to overcome an addiction to caffeine. Oh. I was a, a co big, big coffee drinker. Mm -hmm. And um, I also had some concerns about issues related to some fear of heights and some other phobias like that. Mm -hmm. What I found was um, that through brainwave optimization, I was able to actually have an amazing sense of energy throughout the day. I wasn't having a lag in the afternoon when my kids were coming home from school. Mm. Um, I was sleeping better. I, in fact, did overcome my addiction to caffeine, although I take little snippets of it here and there now. Sure. And uh, then lastly, I actually got some additional benefits that I wasn't actually expecting. Um, creativity went way up. Mm -hmm. um, the phobias definitely went down, which I was not expecting to actually have an impact on. Mm -hmm. um, just overall, uh, much less of a sense of stress and of worry in my life. So really positive things. Great. So your personal story that you actually used it yourself is mm -hmm. what actually introduced it more to open up your own business. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure a lot of my viewers are asking what is brainwave optimization? Mm -hmm. So if you could explain that to them, you know, what that entails a little bit. Absolutely. Brainwave optimization is a sophisticated, non-invasive technology mm -hmm. that works with the energy of the brain. Okay. Our goal is to create better balance in the brain mm -hmm. because as our control center, the brain then impacts the balance of our physical body mm -hmm. and of our emotions, even our spirituality. Sure. So um, the technique is one in which we look at optimal brain patterns that we each create in our brains. Mm -hmm. We actually translate those optimal patterns for each individual into musical notes. Oh, And okay. as a person hears those notes, their brains actually um, understand that those are optimal patterns mm -hmm. and starts to mimic those optimal patterns okay. so that they can move from a place of imbalance to one of balance within their brains. Okay. And you do this by having someone come in and they sit in a chair, and I think we have a picture of your mm -hmm. chair. Right. Right. And then they are actually, you put electrodes on their head. Correct. In certain areas. And once you have that established with that person, you look at that person individually and put them on a certain area for exactly. whatever they need. So. Exactly. Okay. Right. We always start with an assessment so we really see what an individual is experiencing as far as their brain patterns. Okay. From what they tell us individually what they're experiencing and what we see with those brain patterns we come up with a very unique set of protocol or exercises that we do mm -hmm. for that individual typically 
what we have are two-hour sessions. Mm -hmm. Within that session, we will run generally between five and nine different exercises. Okay. Each of those exercises is in this wonderful anti-gravity chair that you mentioned. Yes. Um, sometimes your eyes are open, but oftentimes your eyes are actually closed while you're doing these exercises. Mm -hmm. You listen to the tones that your brain is creating, those oh. musical notes. Okay. And then we have you um, accompany that with perhaps a visualization of a calm and quiet place. Mm -hmm. It might be a body relaxation technique, other kinds of techniques to help you to come to a very still and quiet place while your brain is able to listen to those tones. Okay, and that's so great that you actually assessed each person individually, mm -hmm. and I like that a lot. Yeah. So why do people actually come to Neural Strength? People come for a variety of reasons. Okay. We have um, sort of a gamut of experiences that people want to improve. Mm -hmm. So on one end, we have um, had a number of professional athletes who have come, and this is not just from my office, but mm -hmm. one of any of the global offices. Mm -hmm. um, we've had some uh, professional football and hockey players come, um, NASCAR racers, um, to improve performance. Okay. Um, we have a group of individuals that we called the worried well. The mm -hmm. worried well are people who um, are for the most part doing well, but mm -hmm. they experience stress in their lives, um, life is very busy, sure. and we help them to manage those kinds of issues. For some people, that worry translates into difficulty sleeping. Oh, sure. It can go into depression, mm -hmm. um, a number of things like that. And then we also work with people who are um, struggling with addictions. We know that when the brain is out of balance, our bodies want to feel more balanced. And sometimes a substance is what helps to make that individual feel more balanced. So we do work with a number of people who struggle with addiction as well. Okay, and I love the idea um, when I was reading on your website, post-traumatic stress syndrome mm -hmm. for all of our soldiers. Right. And in other countries, they actually mandate the military to go through a four-week uh, debriefing. Mm -hmm. And here I read that you've had success with a lot of the soldiers. We have had some nice success. Mm -hmm. Over 500 soldiers, not, again, not just in my office, but in other offices as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we are seeing a really wonderful change as far as the PTSD symptoms like hypervigilance, um, difficulty sleeping, depression, a number of things like that. So mm -hmm. we're really excited to work with our veterans. Okay, well that's great because that also proves that it does work. The brainwave optimization does work and your stats are really high on that. Yeah, they are, mm -hmm. they are. Uh, we actually find that about 90% of those who go through brainwave optimization see an improvement in the goals that they have set for mm -hmm. uh, their training sessions. So speaking of which, Let's talk about a typical response that one of your clients may experience. Okay. Um, in general, what we find is that um, for many people, the, the experience that they have is subtle changes initially, mm -hmm. but over time, um, at a three-week point and then often at a six-week point, they start to notice that more and more changes are taking place. Okay. Um, and it's very it's, subtle. I assume it's very subtle changes. Yes, for most mentioned. people, it's more subtle. Okay. Occasionally, we have some pretty profound changes that happen with individuals where mm -hmm. it's really a life-changing kind of an experience. Sure. Um, we've had people who have been unable to sleep for 10 or 15 years who, after three or four sessions start to in fact sleep through the night. Oh. So that's pretty profound. Yes. Um, some of the most typical things that we um, hear people tell us is that the things that typically bother them, they're able to let it roll off their shoulders a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That they have just a greater sense of calm, that their reactivity is uh, is less so that they don't aren't quick to move to anger or quick to move to an irrational kind of a response to something. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other thing too that we hear people tell us is that uh, they are able to manage overall making decisions, processing information, just sort of the, the daily things that we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're at a better level. You're kind of, instead of going up and down in peaks, mm -hmm. this kind of just gives you more of a, right. a really a great A level call. foundation, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, good way to put that. Yeah, and I know that that would really benefit so many of us mm -hmm. in that sense. Yeah. 
So how long has um, brainwave optimization been around or been available? Mm -hmm. This technology was developed about 10 years ago. Okay. I have been involved with it for four years. And to date we have um, brainwave optimization in about 35 countries. Mm -hmm. It is something where we have um, about 35,000 people who have experienced it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I have to correct myself. Okay. It's 15 countries, oh. 35,000 people. Okay. okay, yes, please, thank you. And um, uh, overall, we are seeing um, nice results for most of our people who come through. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, great. And uh, how many, you mentioned how many people experienced this. Um, are there many in Minnesota here? That right you've now, actually? The, it, as far as the number of people who have experienced it? Right, because the only mm -hmm. facility that I know of is the one in Bloomington right now. That's correct. So okay. at our office, we've trained, I'd say, 450 to 500 people. Okay. Um, we are the only office here in Minnesota that's open to the public. There actually is another office up on the Fond du Lac Reservation in Cloquet, okay. oh. and that is open to members of that tribe. They've actually uh, been doing an interesting study as far as sobriety and brainwave optimization and okay. supporting people with that. They are just coming out with some of their um, information as far as the results of that, but they are very pleased with how um, their members are responding to brainwave optimization. Right. So that's exciting. And there was a study done also on your website that I was reading about uh, with good stats as well in regards to, I believe it was addiction? That's correct. Yes. That's correct. So um, that is being reinforced by the, um, the materials that are coming through the Fond du Lac Reservation. But yes, uh -huh. nice results there. Okay. I'm actually very excited too. We are, um, as a whole, starting to do more clinical studies through Brain State Technologies, which is the home company that mm -hmm. licenses this technology. Sure. They just completed a study with Wake Forest Medical School. Okay. And the focus of that was on insomnia. Oh. Their results are not have not been published in a journal, but my understanding is that they are quite exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and they are embarking on a second study through Wake Forest as well, um, looking at migraines. Mm -hmm. So we're just getting more and more statistical data sure. or scientific data. Um, we've had lots of anecdotal stories for many years, mm -hmm. but having the backup of that science piece is helpful for a lot of people to better um, uh, feel better about their decision to work with brainwave optimization. Sure, mm -hmm. and I also noted that you are working with addictions mm -hmm. and we know that there's a lot between prescription drugs and illegal drugs there's a lot of that too, and there's some, I guess, statistics on that as well. There are some. Mm -hmm. So we are um, looking at uh, a couple of different uh, studies. Mm -hmm. Initially, there was a demonstration that was done that worked with eight people who, in fact, were on probation, mm -hmm. and they did brainwave optimization. They have had an amazing response. Seven of the eight people uh, two years after their brainwave optimization continued to be clean, mm -hmm. they were all addicted to meth, which is oh. an extremely addictive substance. Yes. And usually the recidivism rate, as far as going back to use, um, is about 85%. Yes. And we've had about 85% stay clean. So oh. we're excited about that. Yes, Yeah. very much so. Yeah. And we have a few... Uh, information with the actual gentleman, Lee Gertis, that right. he has that personal story. He does. Ah. Lee Gertis is uh, a man who uh, lives now in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. Uh, he, about 10 years ago, he started to, um, excuse me, about 20 years ago, he okay. experienced an assault oh. and was struggling with post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. So for about 10 years, he was working with many different therapies, talk therapy, horse therapy, neurofeedback, lots of different things, mm -hmm. and was not happy with the kinds of results he was getting. His belief was that he could, in fact, overcome the difficulties that he had struggling with, um, a frozen shoulder that caused a lot of pain, um, being a little bit quicker to get to anger and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, his idea was to take some of the components of therapies that are already available mm -hmm. and combine them with his knowledge 
of physics, math, and uh, psychology. Okay. And so his belief was that if his brain, when it was working well, could recognize that it was working well, mm -hmm. essentially observe itself, then it would start to do better. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how he came up with this idea of translating his optimal brain waves into the t musical tones. Okay. So he had really positive results with that. Mm -hmm. um, he also ended up working with his son who was struggling with um, depression and had dropped out of school. When his son ended up having some positive results as well and actually going back to school and getting on the dean's list, <laughs> um, uh, they thought, aha, we're onto something a little bit bigger than we anticipated. So yeah. that was really how they brought this forward to other people. Mm -hmm. And now his son works collaboratively with him he does. as well. He does. Yeah. So it's a, it's a neat family business yeah. that's growing steadily. What a great success story yeah. for all involved. Right. You know. So Paulette, I know that we actually fuel the body with food. Mm -hmm. And I know that bananas and prunes also nourish the body, but it also helps the serotonin in the brain. Right. And so if you could talk about a little bit how this brainwave optimization actually does that for the brain itself. Okay. And you yeah. say learning new things. If you do a crossword puzzle on a daily basis, you should learn how to do Sudoku. Mm -hmm. And also learning maybe a lot of older people needing to learn computers. Right. And it's hard for them to learn new things. It can be very hard, but we know through research in the last 10 to 15 years on the brain mm -hmm. that our brains have so much neuroplasticity they continue to evolve and to develop and be able to learn new things, which is something actually we didn't recognize 30 or 40 years ago. Right. Whenever we learn something that is new or when we um, experiment with something, mm -hmm. our brains need to take in um, that information and essentially create a pattern so it remembers how to do that thing. Okay. A great example of, of that is when we were young and we all learned how to ride a bicycle. Mm -hmm. We initially didn't know to how to push off on that bicycle or to balance. Mm -hmm. So we kept getting on the bike over and over. We just kept getting on. And we didn't recognize at the time, but what we were doing was creating a pathway within our brains that allows us to remember how to push off and mm -hmm. how to balance. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you don't get on a bicycle for 20 years, mm -hmm. if you learn that skill as a kid, you can get back on and you will be able to remember how to do that because your brain has that pattern in its memory. Okay. For somebody who's never gotten on a bicycle mm -hmm. and, and they try to get on as adult, it will in fact be much more difficult for them Yes. because that pattern isn't there. But they can learn to do that. Mm -hmm. It just takes a little bit more time Sure. and repetition is important. So um, our brain actually goes back and recalls from when we learned Absolutely. it when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Um, whenever we have an experience in life, both positive or negative, mm -hmm. our brains are creating patterns around that. So uh, the one of the, th an illustration that I can give as something that can be a more challenging situation would be one where if somebody experiences a stroke, we know that that is a trauma to the brain. Yes. And it is going to respond in a way that um, creates many new patterns focusing on that area to heal that area. Mm -hmm. It's something where um, the brain wants to survive. It doesn't actually care too much about what it does to the body. Oh. It's okay if it, you don't speak and mm -hmm. it's okay if you can't walk mm -hmm. because the brain has survived. Yes. That's really its most important job is to stay alive. Sure. We know that intervention like um, physical therapy mm -hmm. or occupational therapy can help people rebuild new patterns or regain the ones that were lost because of that stroke and the change of all the patterns there. Okay. The, that repetition with physical therapy helps them to walk better or to speak better with, mm -hmm. with other kinds of therapies. Brainwave optimization is another opportunity to help bring back patterns or create new patterns that are based on balance, not on the trauma in this example of a stroke. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, in the sense of it reteaching itself from when it shut down a little bit, then mm -hmm. this opens up a, another pattern to relearn it and it gives the brain waves into 
again to reteach it. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and I have to say that this is really much more of a subconscious effort that happens. Okay. Physical therapy is something very conscious. Mm -hmm. We look to lift up a weight in our arms. Mm -hmm. um, when you're doing brainwave optimization, you really want to let go of the control, mm -hmm. allow your brain simply to hear those musical notes, and the brain makes the choice to move to a naturally more healthy pattern. Okay. So it's really like water moving downhill. It's just going to happen. You mm -hmm. can't really control that. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a neat thing. It's not a talk therapy. You don't have to share anything with me as a technologist. Mm -hmm. You just need to be open to the process and allow your brain to do the work. Mm, very nice. Mm -hmm. And we have a picture of a gentleman sitting in one of the chairs and then also on there you are seeing a computer. Now what is on that computer? Uh, what we see on the computer is essentially an individual's brain waves mm -hmm. translated into a, a picture. Okay. So we see um, specific wave patterns but we also can see balance between the left and the right side of the brain. Oh, okay. And um, which frequencies are um, doing great and which ones we need a little bit more help. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can see on that photo is that we do use electrodes, or I typically call them sensors. Okay. And they are um, non-invasive. They mm -hmm. simply are placed against the, the scalp and they don't put anything into the brain. Okay. It's simply reading the information. We know that when one brain cell talks to another, it creates electromagnetic energy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're reading through those, and that's what's translated on the screen to what we see there. Sure, and you're certified in this, and you're at level three, I believe, so that you understand exactly where to put the sensors or exactly. electrodes on that person. Exactly, okay. in fact, that actually goes back to the 1960s when biofeedback was first developed, and they learned where the energy can be read better and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we do take some of the knowledge of past things that have that were developed and, and merge them in with what we do so that we can get accuracy in what we're doing. Okay. Well, I'm sure my viewers have enjoyed this. So how could they learn more about this uh, neural strength? There are a couple of great opportunities for learning. Mm -hmm. So one thing is certainly going to our website, sure. which is www.neurostrength.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Home Office of Brain State Technologies also has a wealth of information, and so that's another opportunity, and you can um, see them at brainstatetech.com. Okay. There is also a book that was written by the founder, Lee Gertis. Okay. And it is called Limitless You. Okay. The Infinite Possibilities of a Balanced Brain. Okay. And so that is available actually at some of the libraries, through Amazon.com, a no number of places where you can get that. Sure. And of course, you can always call the Neural Strength Office and talk to me or one of the others who works with us. Sure, sure. So if I decide that I want to do this mm -hmm. and I'm going to go in and, and see you, and is there maybe a session that I can see you with um, for one before I commit to doing this for... Absolutely. A session, a whole series? Then? Absolutely. Okay. What we can do, and it's especially for our viewers, is uh, we can offer a, uh, an assessment and then an introductory session. Okay. And through that, you just get a taste of what the sessions will actually be like. Mm -hmm. And then we get a good picture that we can show you of where there is balance and where there is less balance. Okay. And we focus, of course, where there's less balance mm -hmm. to try to bring you back into that positive state. Wow. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, we have a few minutes left, and so I'd really like for you to, to maybe do a call to action or shout out to my viewers a, a little bit about yourself as okay. well. Okay, great. Well, I welcome everybody to consider brainwave optimization. There are locations throughout the country and throughout the world, and our location is right here in Bloomington, Minnesota. Uh, brainwave optimization is a, a non-invasive way to really help you have a better quality of life. And that's what we love about this. That's what I love about it, that um, we can help you to help yourself. Uh, for anybody who's watching Wellness for Knowledge, excuse me, Knowledge for Wellness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, please give us a call. We are happy to give you that introductory um, assessment and session for just $49. So it's a great opportunity.
Well, that's great. So I want to thank you so much for your insight on this. Thank you, Tina. It's been a pleasure. Okay. If you have any questions or would like to contact Paulette, please contact her at www.neuralstrength.com, N-E-U-R-O-S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H.com. Thanks again, Paula, for your lovely insight on this and educating my viewers on neural strength. Thank you, Tina. Please tune in for my other shows of Knowledge for Wellness being televised throughout the Twin City area. Or view my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com. And you can also connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware, to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I sure hope we have provided you with more information to benefit you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Thanks again, Paula. Thank you. Over time you've healed so much in me And I am living proof That although my darkest hour had come Your light could still shine through And at times it's just enough to cast The shadow on the wall Though I am grateful that you shine Your light on me at all Who am I That you would love me so gently You would recognize my name, Lord, who am I? That you would speak to me so softly, conversation with a love most high, who am I? Well, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found Was blind but now I see And the more I sing that sweet old song The more I understand That I do not comprehend this love That's coming from your hand Who am I? That you would love me so gently Who am I? you would recognize my name, Lord, who am I? That you would speak to me so softly, conversation with a love most high, who am I? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that we